My name is Matt Hogan, uh, one of the co-founders co of Element Real Estate, and today I want to talk a little bit about something that I'm very passionate about, an in-your-face problem that um, hopefully everybody is seeing as I am, and that's uh, the issue of erosion. Now the good news is from my perspective it's not affecting the entire coast side. Lindemar, Monterra Beach, the beaches around the distillery, even Ross's Cove, um, I haven't been out there measuring sand, but they seem relatively the same as they did. 35 years ago when I was and you and I were little kids running on these beaches. Mm -hmm. However, as soon as you go south of the harbor, all hell breaks loose. Right. Um, surfers Beach, we it shouldn't even be called Surfers Beach. It should be called Surfers Rock, Surfers Reef, Surfers <laughs> Clay. Clay, Shoal, Erosion Beach. It's gone and it's not coming back. Um, no, it, it is coming back. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> hopefully gonna, learn about we're that. We're gonna get it back. But right now it's gone. You used to be able to walk 50 yards out from the rocks. People would lay out, you'd play frisbees. As kids, we'd go down there every weekend. We'd have a fire, we'd bring all our surf stuff. That's gone, our kids don't have access to that now. You walk a little bit further south. Well, guess what? You can't walk south because the waves, even at low tide, are hitting against the bluffs there. And those bluffs are eroding at what appears to be eight, 10 feet uh, a year. Head further south even, Miramar Beach is in dire straits. If that road fails and you can't get to those businesses or those houses down there with emergency vehicles, that's gonna be a big issue. You mentioned the bridge. Get to the bridge, you got an eight foot piece of road and you got two houses there. It's only a matter of time for those houses are unlivable. Just south of that apartment building, which is right on the rocks there, that three story beautiful one, they're probably shaking in their boots, but take a second, look just south of that beach. There's pylons, there's what look like uh, giant pier pylons in the sand that we never knew existed because they were under sand. They're 15 foot vertical now, which means at least 15 feet of sand has been wiped away from that beach. And the issues go on the further south you go. The coastside beaches and the bluffs to me are the most important resource we have at our disposal. Very unique, very awesome. It's disappearing in front of my eyes. I want some answers. I know the community wants some answers. I'm sitting here with Brian Overfeld, who's a local uh, businessman, a family man, an active community member, probably the most learned person on the coast side into why this is happening. So, I mean, what's going on? Why is really, why are these beaches disappearing in front of our eyes? First of all, thanks for having me. Um, really simple answer. It's the El Granada Breakwater, which was started in 1911. So we've had we've had obstructed sand flow since 1911. Is a basically a sand trap. So as Rivers run out of North America, it picks up sediment, sand, and naturally brings it down the coast, what they call literal cells, basic oceanography. Okay. As the sands, as the rivers bring the sand out from the mountains, like Montero Mountain, for example, we'll get to that in one second, the natural current flow north to south takes that sediment down the coast and deposits the sand and nourishes the beaches naturally. When you break the dams out and you take away the, all the harbors that have been built, you alleviate all the sand traps. Our harbor, the Pillar Point Harbor, is a big sand trap. So it takes that natural flow of sand and it sucks it in and keeps it. So south of the breakwater, there's no nourishment. There's no sand getting through. And that affects the whole bay, Half Moon Bay, and all the way down to Martins Beach. Here's one more problem. We have four creeks that come off Montero Mountain, come down and run out inside the harbor. If you go over to the Yacht Club and you look at their dangerous navigation chart, at the mouth of every one of those river mouths, we got Deer Creek, St. Augustine, Denison Creek, and another one I can't even think of. That's where all the sediment buildup is. If you look before we did anything, what you had was beautiful beaches from Surfers Beach, Miramar, Dunes, Roosevelt. State Beach. State Beach. Beautiful big beaches. Those beaches are now gone. It's now being scoured because not only does the breakwater catch all the sand, on the natural North North American flow. It also traps the four creeks coming off Montero Mountain. I'll give you some specifics. Deer Creek is the one that unloads on both sides of the boat launch. Okay. Deer Creek comes down underneath the highway and unloads. That creek alone creates over 3,000 tons of sediment. You have boats right there that are, it's getting too shallow right. for the boats. I have, I have reports from fishing captains that get their boats stuck unloading fish and fueling up at low tide now. So I just walked out on the inside of the jetty and there's areas where the sand dunes are eclipsing the top of the jetty, the rock wall. This is out just south of Sands. It's high tide right now. I walked out about half mile on sand. You got 10, 15 foot dunes there. That is, a, this, is this is a byproduct of what you're talking about. And this is just what you can see. The harbor's going like, it's not only out there in those dunes and on the side, the whole harbor's going like this. 
The only reason they didn't have an emergency dredge is because Santa Cruz Harbor, they have to dredge the harbor mouth because it fills the sand and it's dry. Right. We don't. We have a deep harbor mouth, but that'll soon be dry too. But the point. But let's go back to Deer Creek for a second. We're talking on an average year, a non-El Nino year. We're talking 3,000 tons of sediment a year. So. My buddy, Ryan Seelbach, that's a geo uh, geologist in San Francisco, he's in the, in, the, in the Mavs event every year. He said, hey, you'll never dredge that harbor. I said, why? He said, all that sand coming out of the, out of the rivers is all clay and bad sediment. It's not sand, it's just bad stuff. And I said, silt and sediment. I said, I said, how do you know? He's like, this is what I've heard. I said, well, let's test it. Sure. So at a negative tide, I did exactly what he told me. I took forced cross samples from across the, the harbor area of Deer Creek area mm -hmm. alone, and I brought it to him. He calls me up two weeks later and tells me, Brian, you guys have white grain granite from Montero Mountain that's 98.5% beautiful sand, 1.5% clay and sediment. He goes, that stuff is unbelievable. And that's the kind of stuff you nourish beaches with because it's good grain and it sticks versus sliding and moving away. So the counter argument that we can't dredge the harbor because the sand is polluted is, 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 is not relevant is what I'm hearing. Well, that's a, that's a great point. If for some reason it was it is polluted part of it that and it needs to be conditioned, we condition it or we dispose of it if mm -hmm. it's a bad like pocket. But the whole other, other side of this whole thing, which we haven't even talked about, is the fact that our harbor's filling up. We need, to, we need to maintain our harbor. If there's pollution in the harbor, we need to clean it. If, there's, if it's getting too shallow, we need to dredge it. The point is, is not only, it's a win-win-win-win it's a, it's a win, win for all these things. If we, we need to clean and clear and keep our, our harbor area as clean as a gem as it is, and then take what we can use and put it on the beaches and let the, let, get that south moving stuff going. But one point I really want to make, this is the most important thing. Someone really smart said to me, Brian, I want you to take a look at this in its natural state before we ever did any man-made mm -hmm. structures. And what do we have? We have those beautiful big beaches. We have these four creeks plus a north-south flow. That's all being obstructed by the breakwater. Before we built these man-made structures, we had huge, beautiful beaches. All that Miramar stuff is, would be protected. I don't know why people don't believe in big white sand beaches, man. Yeah. Our entire bay, half of bay, could be a beautiful big recreation area. All the homes would be protected, the highway would be protected, and snowy plovers would have the sand dunes that are inside the harbor. The they outside. need to be on the outside of the harbor yeah. for, for the for endangered species. It's unbelievable to me what this could do for our community, our children, our families, our visitors. So let's just talk about where they do dredge and nourish real quick. Yeah, so my question is, is this can't be a problem unique to us. There's harbors all around the nation, <laughs> all up and down California. The world. The world. This isn't, this, this can't be something that we're only experiencing, right? Every harbor in Hawaii, they have a dredge system. So when they dredge every harbor in Hawaii and they get back to the first one, they do it all over again. Every harbor in our sanctuary, Santa Cruz, Moss Landing, Monterey, they dredge them. They just did a huge, huge beach. Wait, hold on, hold on. All the harbors in the the, the marine sanctuary, which Monterey Bay from National here sanctuary. to from to the Monterey. tip of Pillar Point, okay. to Monterey. So they're all being dredged, except for ours, successfully. Yes. And but, and and before we we talk about the why, is that is that dredging program working for those harbors? Does it prevent the sand buildup? Does it <coughs> replenish the natural flow of sand from north to south? One hundred and ten percent. I want to know. Why, if you can explain why that is not something we can do here if it's done and working in areas right around the corner. It was basically a border issue from what I can tell. There's a lot of stip speculation and, and misunderstandings and we don't really know why they've shut us down so hard. But they drew their boundary in 1992 around Pillar Point Harbor instead of including our harbor in the sanctuary. Monterey, Moss Landing, and Santa Cruz are included in the sanctuary. We are out the sanctuary boundary. So there's the three no-nos. There's the don't drill for oil, don't pollute, and don't kill dolphins, whales, and Those endangered are rules species. Of the sanctuary. And we all agree. So when you take dredge and you, which we now call beach nourishment, thank goodness they did change the literature, mm -hmm. and you go out to in, if I take a handful of sand inside the harbor and I throw it over that wall, that is a massive fine. Okay. You just that's the that's the rule that can't be broken. But we've we've now that they've seen how successful nourishment is and they realized they, they completely fouled up in 1992 because in 1992, for some reason, they didn't sit down with our Harbor District and discuss getting dredge permits. Mm -hmm. Now, if they would have done that in 1992, and I keep saying 1992 because that wasn't that long ago, sure. really, that way they got permits for all the other places, but not us. So now we can never, they literally have told me, yeah, you can never, ever do it. 
And I've already cleared that hurdle. Now we, they are. So tell me about that because if we can't do it, that's bleak. Because not only do the beaches go, the road's going to go, the bluff tops are going to go, Highway One's going to go. So not doing anything is not an option. What can be done? What what should be done? What's going to be done? Okay, so here's what here's where we're at. After 15 years of of talking till I'm blue in the face, from what I understand, my friend Brad Dammitz, who's very worked with NOAA and with the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, has gone to the Ocean Protection Council and Boating and Waterways. We eventually are going to obtain an $800,000 grant from Boating and Waterways. Right now what he's pulled off is a $75,000 approval from the Ocean Protection Council to begin the planning phase. Okay. So that means that now we can pay the engineers and the right people to work on this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a plan to take 75,000 cubic yards of sand and place it right there by those stairs where we just spent 1.8 million dollars for the, the stairs and, and rocks. Those are falling into the ocean already. That, yeah, and by the way, when you place riprap and rocks like they keep doing in Miramar, it's the absolute worst thing for the coast because when the water, not only does the water go underneath it and create sinkholes. And the rocks sink. But the, but the, but the reflection and deflection of the water now on right around the other side of the rocks is like goes 35 to 40 times the erosion rate that it already is. I'm working with Half and Bay Review right now. This is really cool and Brad is, is as well. We're gonna get them all the information so all y'all can know what's happening with our planning phase. Hopefully we'll take the 75,000 cubic yards hopefully by the end of summer fall of 2017 and we're going to place 75,000 cubic yards of sand which is quite a bit of sand should make a difference right where it's needed and then we're going to have we're going to let our community have a look at sure. what it's going to do i already know what it's going to do it's going to be beautiful it'll it'll be the beginning of getting the sand back into the bay of half moon bay and letting it start to flush south so what can we do let's 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 stay together we're gonna get the information out. I'm working with the Half and Bay Review, Clay Lambert and, and Karina from the Half and Bay Review. We're working on the story right now. This is real. What we're doing is real. And we're gonna get that out. We're, let's just keep pushing together okay. through what you're doing right now, which I really appreciate. What I'm trying to do just as a, a concern, I want my daughter, I want my, I want my niece, I want your kids, I want all my friends' kids, I want us all to enjoy our beaches, get our waves back. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's some major, major surfonomic studies about places where we do have good recreational waves. Mm -hmm. It's no longer to be ignored. I used to be told, don't talk about surfing, Brad. Don't talk about bringing the surfing waves back. It's a part of our community and our culture and our history. And, unf and what's crazy, surfing brings money. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mavericks is like $28 million a year to our community. So if I'm hearing you, it's it's, it's staying aware, it's uh, spreading the news, it's uh, observing what's going on, and when you see something you don't like, get it out there. Um, the local organizations will move if the community um, speaks loud enough and with one voice, and that's the, uh, what I'm trying to attempt to do here. So I really appreciate you sitting down with me. Um, I think this is one of the most important issues that we face as a Coastside community. For me, it is the most important issue. Um, and I really um, am interested to see the developments of all your effort and your hard work. Yeah, it's a win, 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 win scenario. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> all right, buddy. Appreciate it. Let's go, sir. <laughs>